just going to press that button. Nah, there's no light on there, but I'm not too sure if anyone's out there yet. If anyone's seen me, I'm not too sure. Hang on. Okay, so I've got to go Soho TV Facebook page. Oh, Jesus. Still don't really... There's no light. Can anyone... Oh, God, don't they know I'm an actor and I can't do this on my own? Kel? Um, this is coming up in a foreign language. I can't understand. Kelly? Kel? Yeah? Are you... Can you come here, please? Kel? I'm gonna need your help on this because I can't I can't understand what they, this is. I think this is in some sort of Brazilian language or something. I'm not sure. There's no uh, light coming on this uh, at all. You, you, yeah, you, that you're live. Are we live right now? Yeah. Hey, hi guys, we're live. Hey, I'm Socrates Otto, or better known as Socks Otto, and I play Maxine Conway in Wentworth, the episode you just saw. And I have strategically placed this beautiful plant in the background, and being top dog which is a revolution in itself, I have thought that I'm going to recruit a jail bitch tonight. And I have asked Kelly Brown, my uh, jail bitch, to get the questions that you are sending to me, and she's going to feed them to me, because I don't want to spend the whole night doing this and trying to sort of uh, read all these posts and uh, losing your beautiful faces and you losing my beautiful face. So, Kelly, if that's cool by you, actually, no, I'm not going to ask you, that's what you're going to do. Yes. Okay, being a top dog. Yes, top dog. What what I say goes, right? What so, do you say? Thank you. I'm going to try and coax her as well to come and say hi on screen because she's bloody gorgeous. No, no, I hang behind <laughs> the scene. I hang behind the scene. We'll see about that. Tilsters, Wenties, go for it. Let's so start. So Chelsea Hammond says, what preparation or research do you do to play a transgender person? Hey, Chelsea. Um... What uh, preparation I do? Well, back in season two when I first started playing Maxine, obviously I did a lot of research on what it was like to be a trans woman uh, transitioning at that age at 40 years old. So there was a lot of research in terms of hormone development, uh, psychological development, but in terms of the brief, I matched it being um, quite physical, the same age group, and in what the brief actually entailed was Maxine was much more uh, um, diametrically kind of opposed to what she looked like. So basically I tapped into the, her vulnerability and her um, uh, softness and her um, uh, frailty. And I think it's that that I focused on more than I did on the fact that I had to be a woman. Uh, so per se and as the seasons went on then I did a lot more research to actually see what happened as the hormones took place and we continued and, and Maxine developed as as she has <laughs> Katie Kennedy says what's it like to use the steam press oh Katie Katie what do you think it's like to use the steam press uh, it's like any fan of prisoner uh, which is the show that Wentworth is the reenactment of, knows that that steam press is like a Trojan horse. It's like a holy grail. You get behind it and you just become invincible. Um, you step up, step up to the plate and you're just... Uh, um, you, you feel like royalty. I, if you actually look closely, I couldn't let go of uh, the steam press handle. I felt, I felt invincible. And I think that... Uh, um, it was someone saying, come on, Socks, you've got to let go because we've got a dining room scene coming up and there's bread and butter pudding waiting for you. And as soon as they said that, I went, boom, <laughs> dessert, absolutely, I've got to go. I'll tell you one thing, though. Um, I've always maintained that if Wentworth, came to a, uh, if Wentworth came to an end, not that we hope it does, but when you know everything does seem to come to an end, I've always maintained that Wentworth, uh, the... Uh, it should remain as a, uh, the facility that we, we film in should actually remain like a museum so people can come in and take tours and go through the dining room and take, go through the, um, the laundry and take photos of themselves with the steam press. Everyone's got to actually go through, the, through this. It's like a, like a, a, a Madame Tussauds, like a Wentworth Tussauds. It's um, incredible. It's, it actually is. And there's only been four top dogs. Four top dogs. Jax Holt, we know what happened to her. Frankie Doyle, who's... I'm sure there's going to be some West Frankie uh, questions coming in, but uh, 
Uh, Frankie Doyle, beautiful B. Smith. She's in the slot right now. If she wants to stay in the slot, that's okay for a couple more episodes because this thing of Top Dog is suiting really well. And of course, myself, Maxine Conway, is the new Top Dog. But unreal. To get behind that steam press is unreal. So Tegan Rose wants to know what's hey, been your favourite scene to film? Uh, my favourite scene to film... Uh, I think we can talk about it. Hey, it's coming up. It's coming up. The next two episodes especially. Um, there's some pretty gritty stuff. There's some pretty explosive stuff about to happen. Some pretty groundbreaking stuff that you haven't seen on Australian television before. That's all I can say. But that's they're probably my favourite scenes coming up. Cass says, keep up the great work. Thanks, Cass. Keep up watching. <laughs> um, Claire Alice Elizabeth, Elizabeth as what happened to Liz's daughter? Ah, oh, Liz's daughter remained at Walford. Yeah, uh, because we, uh, the season... Between season three and four, there was four months of us being in Walford Prison while our H-block was uh, being refurbished. And uh, Liz's daughter, Soph, I believe her name was, uh, remained there. Hudson says the funniest thing that's happened off where's camera. Where's the love, Kelly? Where's all there's, the love? Oh, there's lots of love. Okay, I'm not so giving any love. Um, was it are you coming up with this or are you reading or what's going on? It's, where's the love? There's lots Maxine? of love coming in very fast and furious that, that it's hard to, to... I'd like to hear some of that, please. Okay. Um, th th everyone's asking questions now, but Leah says we love you, Maxie. Thank you, Leah. Um, Brett says, Brett. hey, love, the show, just saying hi. Hey, love, just saying hi back. Thanks um, for Michaela watching. Michaela says you're an amazing actor. Oh, Michaela. Um, Megan okay. says lots of love. That's good love. Okay. Sarah says love that's you, all I smiley need. face. Kel, that's okay. all I need. Okay. Um, <laughs> next question. So Leah Walsh says you rock at Top Dog. Is this going to be a permanent gig? Oh, I hope so. I hope so. Um, I think... This is actually quite revolutionary if you think about it because she stood up, we just saw in that episode, she just stood up to in, uh, an institutionalised rules and she backed herself, you know. She knew there could be consequences going against the rules of this prison. But she, stu she stood up and backed herself and she chose empathy over punishment, pardon over punishment. And what's interesting is that the women started to question their own values towards the rules of this prison, you know, um, which is a big lesson in itself. Because Maxine's mind and heart came together at the one, at that one moment, and um, that's a big lesson. So I think she'd be a great top dog, and I think there could be a revolution in the next coming episodes. Says the actor, maybe I should become a writer next season. I don't know. Do we see a weak or vulnerable side to Maxine this season? Well, who said that? Oh, I went too quick. I'm so sorry. Whoever said that? Whoever said that? Thank you for that Great question. question. We did see a very weak and vulnerable side of Maxine when she first entered the prison. She was, um, she felt like a clown in a circus. And, you know, I'll tell you a secret. When I first came in as Maxine, I did make a secret pact to myself. And I thought, one day I'm going to rule this roost. I'm going to become top dog. Not that I ever thought that would happen. But, hey, what a manifestation. Um, so... Uh, we've seen the vulnerability in her, and I think we're going to see it. Of course, she's been diagnosed with the life and death disease this season, uh, but we see it across every character, so I think it's part and parcel of all the characters that we see. Yeah. Um, Andrew Norris says, how does it feel to play a transgender character? Andrew, it's probably the best role of my career. I think that bringing Maxine as a trans woman into the mainstream is... Uh, the best thing about playing playing the character. Minorities are not represented on our TV screens enough, the transgender community, especially in Australia. And to help break down stereotypes and break down marginalisation and open people's minds and hearts, the edu educating people about what it means to be trans in today's day and age has been nothing short of a blessing. I've loved it. And, you know, I've loved that you guys have loved the... The, uh, the character as well. Laura Thomas says, will Maxine ever give the freak a serving? Oh, God, that would be, oh, that would be, that, yes, well, let's hope so. <laughs> let's hope so. She needs a serving, doesn't she? But she's always got one up on all these uh, other inmates. I don't know. Hey, hey, guys, we're back, of course. It's got nothing to do with me. It's my jail bitch behind the uh, camera right now that's doing all the technology because I'm an actor and I hire people to do this for me. I'm paying you. You know this by the second, Kel, so get it right next time. Let's not lose the seat. So 
Sorry, socks. Sorry. Okay, okay. Let's continue. It's just that you broke the internet. So much love was coming in that it, it, it cancelled out the feed. I, okay, enough with the love. Enough with the love. I, 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 can, I can feel it. I can There's feel lots it. of love coming in from everywhere. Thank you. Look, Donna's even saying, phew, you're back. Thank and you, Donna. And Georgie Willis says, do you ever picture yourself being a part of a prison show? Did you ever picture yourself being part of a prison show? Uh... No, and certainly not as an inmate. I mean, I do remember watching Prisoner growing up, and, um, you know, it was a legendary show. And, uh, do I admit this? <laughs> Me and my family used to actually play Prisoner <laughs> as we were teenagers, yeah. But, uh, again, manifestation. I never imagined I would actually be cast in this role or be part of this, um, this show that's gone global and has just, uh, you know, reached out. There's so many people in so many different ways. No, no, never in my wildest dreams. Tash wants to know who's the funniest character, and she also loves your work. Thank you, Tash. Thank you. The funniest character, I think, without uh, question, would probably go to our most outstanding supporting Logie winner of recent uh, weeks. Unanimously, would be Celia Island. Uh, Celia is a one-woman show, a one-man show. She needs to do a one-man show. She's a ventriloquist. She's a chameleon. She just keeps us all in hysterics, and I love her to death. Bless your cotton sock, Celia, if you're watching. Celia Island. Um, Liam Robinson wants to know, what happened with the, with the d dessert scene? What happened with the dessert scene? Well, I wanted to eat it all. <laughs> The bread and butter pudding, but I was not allowed. Obviously, we are under budget. Um, I think it's it, it goes back to the women uh, expecting Maxine to burn Tasha's hands and Maxine choosing empathy over punishment, and them questioning that and actually kind of going, "Wow, this changes the rules in the prison," and we're actually offering um, our respects to you by actually standing up against rules, against institution, institutionalised rules, and backing yourself, because it's a very courageous move to do so. Do you know? What a spirit. And the women recognised that in, that in Maxine, and they gave her respect and said, OK, we like the way you have actually just handled um, being top dog and making decisions. So it was an act of generosity and respect, and they offered as something so precious, and I think that that's what the basis of that scene was. So watch out, P. Smith. <laughs> Sophie says, who are you good friends with Offset? Uh, I'm friends with Danielle and I'm friends with C Katrina mostly because we worked so extensively together um, across the seasons, Danielle especially, and Katrina in um, upcoming episodes, um, both of them um, I'm very close to. Yeah. Just want to say hi, love your character from Kayla. Thanks, Kayla. So much love coming in. They're all love. But Benjamin wants to know what happened to Sky. Sky, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. She's somewhere in the prison, somewhere. I don't know if she's been transferred as well. Um, <laughs> she's probably still hiding somewhere. I don't know. She's certainly not on the roof. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Sky, where are you? Um, Christy Burns says, it's my birthday in less than two weeks. Can I please oh, get a happy birthday? You're a Gemini. That may mean, I think. Yes. Or a Cancer. What's your name, sorry? Christy. Christy, happy birthday. How old are you? I don't know. She's she, she scowled up. <laughs> <She's, laughs> Scally, get on sorry, with it. Sorry, Scout Happy wants birthday. To, happy Scout, birthday. I've got a good one. Scout wants to know how long it takes to put on Maxine's makeup. It used to take about two and a half hours when I first started, especially with that blonde wig, which we now call the blonde shag pile, and we hope we should. We will never see that uh, wig again. It wasn't my choice. <laughs> but Gary, her ex-lover, loved Maxine as a blonde, so she held him dear to her heart, hence the blonde wig came in when we first saw her. But it took about two and a half hours when we first started to um, establish Maxine's look with Tess Natoli, our genius head of makeup, who... Recently worked on Mad Max, the Oscar-winning movie as well. Um, but through the seasons, I ended up growing my own hair and uh, with different makeup techniques and uh, wardrobes, uh, 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 costume that they were helping me underneath Maxine's body to feminize her. It ended up being from about two and a half hours to about an hour um, every.
every every day. Cool. Everyone loves you. There's so much love coming in. But Jackie wants to know, do you have any funny or memorable moments from behind the scenes that you could share with everyone? Oh, Jackie, Jackie, if this was in two weeks' time, I would tell you, but I can't tell you yet. But in two weeks' time, you know. Actually, no, I can tell you. Oh, no. I've, I've let the spoiler out. Maybe not. No spoilers. Okay, no spoilers. Uh, ask me in two weeks' time. It had to do, I guess... Oh, no, I can't. <laughs> Kelly! Shh! I will silence you. I'll become the top dog. I can't tell you. No. I, there was a lot of a lot of looking closely at uh, Maxine's body uh, recently, and um, there was a lot of interesting looks from extras, kind of not really understanding what was real and what wasn't, including from the cast. Actually, if you know what I'm talking about, we saw in episode four, was it the uh, the examination? Mm-hmm. Yeah, was it episode four? It was, it was it was recently. Yes, it's happened. And um, I also know that some of the main cast were looking at me out of envy or admiration. Hi, Kate. I won't say which Kate especially <laughs> it was. But um, it was all about, you know, those things <laughs> that grow around here. Um, Steph Lloyd wants to know, what does Maxine hope to accomplish while being top dog? Oh, she doesn't really know. She's just going off the radar. I mean, she listen, you know, this was a very important moment. She had a window of, of opportunity to try a trial drug that could actually starve the tumours that are spreading through her body and maintain her hormone uh, replacement therapy. But because the women, her family, recognised her as someone they needed, someone with support and spirit and love and brain, she kind of went, well, you know what, I choose my family over that so she sacrificed a chance of survival so she doesn't know she's just going she's just winging it and she's thinking my family is important so she doesn't know she's going to see she's going to see what it reveals but that just again shows her nobility and her spirit you know and her selflessness mm. Kay Kay Lee wants to know will Maxine look after herself after all will she look after herself after all um Kind of uh, is a am amalgamation of that last question, isn't she? Isn't she? Isn't it? Because she puts everyone else ahead of her, doesn't she? Um, at this stage, it looks like it looks like she is kind of because she's standing up for herself and saying, "No, I want to change the rules in this prison. Enough violence, you know. Enough violence. Let's let's stop this and let's actually start talking about you know what's right and what's humane." But at the same time, she's thinking about everyone else. So, I'm not sure. You know, this is the battle between Maxine, her head and the heart. You know, where do we go? She's in conflict constantly. Mm. Um, so many questions. It's coming in fast and furious. Yeah, but that's um, why. I, that's why I, I'm paying you, you by the second. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Do you want to come and say hello? No, now? I, no. I, I'm, I'm, I'm very good just being a servant behind you. Everyone, you need to say we need to see Kelly. We need to see Kelly. So then she'll be like, oh God. I've got, I've got to come. Well, you life. know what? Um, so many people have so many questions, but Anthony wants to know what was the hardest scene for you to film this season? They're coming up, Anthony. That was episode five. Next week is episode six, which is the middle of the season. How fast has that gone? And I've been told the next two episodes go up a notch. So we're about to hit the most intense scenes coming up, uh, and they were the hardest to film. They're all coming up. I'm so sorry, I can't tell you anymore, but they're coming up. But how fast is this season going to go before you know it? And I know you've waited an, an eternity for season four, and thank you for being patient, but hang in there. Hang in there. There's a reason why it's hashtag went worth the wait. Hmm. Everyone keeps saying we need to see Kelly, but I'm going to skip past the question. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm yes, going to ask you do. a real question. Yes, go for um, it. Benjamin, any news on season five? Uh, I haven't heard any news, but being top dog, you'd think I'd be the first one to know. So, Kelly, any news on season uh, five? No, Kelly's going like this. So, no news on season five, but fingers crossed, huh? Fingers crossed. Hmm. Okay. Um, so much love. Look, all the little love hearts popping up on the Thanks. screen. We've got so many people feel on it. here. Thank you. Um, love back. Love people back. Are, like, love you, Socks. Such a great actor, such a great talent. Um, Caitlin would like to know, what's your inspiration to play Maxine? Do you draw on anything? Uh, do I draw on anything? 
My inspiration... Okay, okay. This might get a little bit serious, and I, I don't mean it to get a bit serious, but I think the world is in such a place of disarray at the moment. We are losing connection. Um, we are sort of circulating um, around fear that we have lost compassion and lost love and lost attention for each other. And Maxine has always been fighting for... I mean, our divine right is to be loved and to be seen and to be happy and to have compassion in our lives. And that has always driven her. So my inspiration is to keep bringing that into the field. And social media, God, I love you, because all the trans community that have contacted me and have shared their stories, you inspire me, you educate me, and you push me deeper and deeper into being more authentic in my portrayal of Maxine. And we need more of that because the world just seems to be going panicking and we need to actually bring it together. So that's where my inspiration comes, just to come back to our divine right of human love. Um, David said to tell Kelly to get on screen or you'll put her in the steam press. I, yes. don't, I don't want to go on the steam press. Come on, so, come no. on. Well, I've got okay. so many questions here. If I come on the other side, you'll miss all these yes. questions we, from we your can amazing swap. fans. We can swap and I can actually... Um, it's just not worthwhile. I'm here to serve you. So, She's so beautiful. So, <laughs> what, what oh, it's going me. so quick. Look so many. <laughs> Would you say Maxine is like a mother to the other inmates, says Simon? Well... She's she's like a she, yeah she's like a mother but uh, you know so is so is Liz I think Lizzie's our resident mum as well um, I think Maxine um, yeah that's an interesting interesting way to describe her but you know she's loosened up a lot as well you know she liked our fun and and um, I think she's got a lot of uh, a lot of uh, she's got a rebellious streak, you know, and I don't mean necessarily physical. I just mean in the way she thinks. She's a brainiac, um, but she's also very stoic. And um, in terms of how selfless she is, yeah, she she cares. She puts everyone else in front of her before her, of course. Yeah. Um, who is your favourite cast member from Sarah Ferguson Spriggs? Sarah Ferguson Spriggs. Is that your full name or is Spriggs the place where you're from? No, it's hyphenated Ferguson Spriggs. Hey, Sarah Ferguson Spriggs. My favourite character or actor? This is the thing. My favourite character would probably be a uh, cross between Boomer and Ferguson because they're so diametrically opposite. And imagine playing those characters. They, you know, what, what a field day. Uh, and my favourite actors... Uh, I can't say that because they'll scrutinise me. <laughs> they'll scrutinise me if I told them. It depends who's watching and who's not. <laughs> all of them. I love them. I love them all. Describe them in five words. I love them. I love them more than death. <laughs> I love them like death. I love them more than... Uh, yeah, go on. <laughs> Oops. Kelly! Um, Laura and Donald Donnellan wants to know, is it hard not to laugh during the fight scenes? Oh, it's hard not to cry. It's horrible. I'm not a violent person. The girls, man, I've got to give them kudos. I've got to give them chops because none of them whinge at all. I'm not going to say anything about Robbie or Aaron. <laughs> I haven't had any violent scenes with them. But no, um, it's hard not to laugh when it's drama scenes. You know, the violent scenes, we've got a lot of um, stunt coordinators to actually make sure none of, them, none of us get hurt. But it's more the dramatic scenes when you actually get really, really dramatic. That's sometimes when you actually just piss yourselves laughing, and that's that's the best. They're the best moments. Yeah, <laughs> take you by surprise. Um, Ebony Smith, how long have you been? I acting love for? her to death. That's what I was trying oh. to say. I love her to death. That's what I was trying to say. God. Too many wines. Yes, Socks. too many wines. Thanks, Kelly. Um. <laughs> now I've lost that question. I've forgotten it too. So let's go on to John O'Connor. How do you get into character? Um, how do I get into character? Again, it's uh, it's different. I've played a myriad of characters across my career, and it, it's really different. I mean, with Maxine, um, we've got a wonderful wardrobe department, a wonderful makeup department that supply so much. You know, 50% of it is the wardrobe underneath and the hair and makeup. Um, and I think, you know, three seasons in, it's just become so effortless, you know, because... I start at 4am and I 
I'm the last one to go because I've got to take all that makeup off. So it, 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 it's really kind of, it, it's quite effortless and easy to actually stay in that character, you know, and with that cast and crew who just support me. Yeah, it, it's quite easy. It's not really a good answer, but I'm going to have to deal with it. I'm going to address a lot of people are asking the same question. There's a lot coming in. Okay. Is Maxine going to help Boomer get her baby? Oh, and someone said recently, wouldn't Boxine be a good little name for the baby? Oh, wouldn't that be awesome? We need more babies in prison. Not. <laughs> I don't know if it'd be as cute as um, as Nash, but... Um, Oh, that would be that would be another selfless thing, yeah. But um, I don't know. Write to the writers. Write to the writers. We don't know what's coming up. Maxine is faced with a with a big thing at the moment. She's been diagnosed with cancer. Do you know? I don't think she's thinking about babies with Puma. She could be actually, but yeah, I don't know. Write to the writers. Oh, more babies in prison. Did I just say that? <laughs> And also, let's address let's address the elephant in the room yeah. that everyone keeps asking about. Yeah. Where's Frankie? I thought you were going to ask about the diagnosis. Where's no, Frankie? I'm going to ask. Everyone's everyone wants to know where's Frankie. We've well, I, to address it. I'm currently top dog. I have no idea what Frankie's doing. She's on the outside. To my knowledge, she's probably canoodling with her psychologist girlfriend and having a beautiful time, and so she should. I'm trying to get an appointment with a psychologist personally, but I can't. So I'm assuming that Frankie's with her psychologist girlfriend having a having a wonderful time and a deserved deservedly so so that's, um, that's the point cat's about. just wait in you she says that we've discussed this socks she's your favorite cat philosophy yeah didn't i say that didn't he, i he said boom was a favorite but yeah. she's just she's in cat blocks it's absolutely shouting. absolutely a absolutely you know and what what should our baby be called There's so many other questions coming in. I don't think she can type that fast. She's my favourite. She's. We were talking so before. She's, she's your favourite. Yeah, I did say that. Relax, cat. <laughs> um, again, you're so fabulous. You're so amazing. I Thank love you. you. You're a great actor. Thank you. But you know what? Amy wants to know what is going to happen with the cancer. Can you tell us? Of course, I can't tell you. But what I can tell you is this. And thank you for asking. Um, when the story came to me, and look, cancer is a harrowing subject, but it affects every single one of us, okay? I've known quite a few people that have uh, passed from cancer. I've known quite a few people that have survived from cancer. So it's not unfamiliar territory. What's fantastic and interesting about this storyline in this season is that Maxine has been diagnosed with an estrogen-sensitive breast cancer. Now, uh, women and cisgender men, are we still on air? <laughs> it's, yeah, I, Are we yeah. crackling? Right here, well, crackling this, is, this is the most important thing. Maybe you just thing. accidentally turned the camera around to my face, but it's okay. You I, just I wanted, it everyone just wanted to see Kelly. And just you were gone, talking okay. so serious. Serious topic. Okay, continue. Cisgender are people that uh, uh, identify with the genitalia they were born as opposed to trans people. So basically all I'm saying is that Maxine's cancer is something that your wife or your auntie or your... Um, mother or your father or your brother yes men can get the same sort of breast cancer we don't know too much about men with breast cancer there hasn't been enough statistics there hasn't been enough research uh, people are still stigmatized if they think they're going to come up and say i've got cancer because of because people think it's a weakness now what i i've got to pay kudos to the writers and the producers and the head of Foxtel Brian and the head of drama Penny Wynn for actually bringing this to the forefront because it's not directly a trans story. It's a story that affects every single one of us. Um, and the most, the, the most integral part of this storyline that I can tell you that I love playing is that what happens when you are faced with a life and death diagnosis and when the rug is pulled from out, from under you, what happens to your identity? And furthermore, what does your family and friends reveal to you about yourself when you are faced with a life and death diagnosis? And these are the scenes that I loved playing in ensuing episodes because it affects every single one of us. So again, it's not just a trans story. It's a story that affects every human being. So again, kudos to Wentworth for tackling something that is so current and poignant and important. Hmm. Do you, want to, do you want to show your face no, again? I, I think I just showed my head, but I didn't mean Isn't to. Isn't she so. gorgeous? No, I, all I showed was my eyebrows off my head, I think, by accident. 
Um, Jaden, do we see a weakened bone side to Maxine this season? Um, Jaden, I think I know who you are, dude. If it's you, hello. Do we see a vulnerable side to Maxine? I think we saw bits of it in this episode, and I think we're going to see quite a lot more because, again, she doesn't know what the consequences of her actions are. She's just flying off her whim, but she's back in her spirit, do you know? And she's actually going, this is what I believe in, you know? Um, it could go either way. Uh, but, you know, in ensuing episodes with, with what's about to be revealed, yeah, we're going to see all sides of stuff. From all characters, from all characters. Like I said, I've been told that the next episode's taken up up, up a notch, and um, season four is going to, again, it's groundbreaking television. Mm. Um, a lot of people are asking about who they saw in the trailer at the end of last night's episode. Me. Do we, what do we want to talk about? Wasn't it me? Sig. Oh, Siggy, the new inmate. Yes, I just saw it. She, she's in the van. God, that van. I remember three seasons ago, I was there. I was there with little Jess Warner and, and the other thing with the crutch that tried to kill um, B. Smith. Um, yeah, Siggy's coming in next week. I shouldn't call her Siggy. <laughs> Sonia Stevens arrives uh, next uh, next week. What are they asking, Kel? They're asking about her. What's she going to play? What's she going to do? Can we give anything away? Can we give them a little... A little insight into her character? Um, I know. Well, all that will be revealed next uh, next step. But uh, again, I'm, you know, I'm top dog. I've, I'm not, I, I don't have, pro I've, that's they're, they're none of my, that's none of my business. I'm not interested in that. I want to know where, where um, Frankie's psychologist is because I need an appointment. <laughs> <laughs> and I love B. Smith so much. But she can stay in the spot for a little bit longer because I like this position of being top dog. Can we talk about Danielle for a minute? Yeah, like, lots of people ask about Danielle. So a lot of people have asked, do you get on well with Danielle? What's it like working Hate with her. Danielle? She drives me bonkers. I never want to see her again. Um, if I can describe uh, Danielle in, in uh, five words, I love her to death. Danielle is one of the most soulful women I have ever met in my life. And I am so gifted to have uh, been working with her across this, this, uh, these three seasons. Um, how often do you get up to go to work and go, oh my God, I can't do this. I don't think I can do this. Every time I saw the call sheet and it said, Socrates Otto, Danielle, Cormac, having seen together, I was riveted because I know that she was going to bring the best out of me. She inspires me to no greater length, and she personifies good news. Um, she's one of the most wonderful women I've ever worked with and ever known, and it comes across, and you know that. You know, she puts the show above everything else and um, is such a humanitarian, but like I said, she's one of the most soulful women I've ever met, and I love her to death. Can't say it enough. But she can stay in the slot for a little bit longer, okay? There's um there's a there's someone that keeps flicking so quick yep. that is posted about literally six or seven times for a shout out, and I think it's someone Fisher. So write it again, and as soon as I Yo, see Fisher. it, I will give, I will tell Socks who you are, and I will give you your shout out because it it just the questions are coming in super quick, but I will give you your shout out. Is, if you post is anyone it. is anyone shouting from overseas? Does it does it list there's, that? Who are you? Let us know. Where are you where are you coming in from? Um, cool. Lots of, lots of, lots of, lots of questions. Um, Can they see me Susie this? Hamilton. How awesome is Pamela? Yeah, she's all right. <laughs> Susie Hamilton. Pamela is a legend in Australian television and Australian stage. And get this. How lucky am I? When I graduated from drama school in 2000, my first gig, my second gig actually, my first gig was with Pia Miranda, who played, um, oh... She was um, in last season, Pia. I'm so sorry. I've forgotten your character's name. Oh, God, that's terrible of me. Uh, anyway, Pia was in last season. Uh, but my second gig was playing opposite Pam Wraith in a play called Salt, an Australian play. And I played Pam's Spanish lover. This is back in 2000, 16 years ago. Can you believe it? So I've known Pam for that long. Um, how awesome is she? Oh, my God. She's beyond capital A. Plus, plus, squared. 
Yay, Panny. We need to see. We, you need to do one of these with Pam. Yes, wouldn't that be cool? This is Kelly's, by the way. She's making you more entertaining. <laughs> okay, so Jordan would. Oh no, Jordan's gone. Um, Fisher, are you back? She's not come back on. She's been posting all night, and I and it goes too quick for me to grab her name. But whoever you are, the Fisher, USA are tuning in. Hey, from where? And Pia played Jody. <gasps> Jody, thank you. I'm sorry, Pia. Jody, absolutely, Jody. My first play ever was was um, Jody's boyfriend. I was naked, <laughs> and actually, I was naked with with Pam in uh, my second play. Um, Reese Clark wants to know if you miss your blonde wig. Reese Clark, if you ever find that blonde wig, burn it, and never mention it again. Um, so many people want shout outs. There's so many people. Maybe just we say shout out to every single person. Shout out to Fisher. Shout out to America. Shout out to Brazil. UK, WA. Shout out to the UK. Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis, Tennessee. If Frankston. Any, if anyone is in the UK and loves um, dark chocolate, I'm a big lover of dark chocolate. And if they can go to Paul A. Young's Soho Lounge and get me Aztec drinking chocolate and contact me via social media and because they can't ship to Australia you can can you please do that and I promise when I get to London at the end of the year I will take you out to a fancy lunch I promise um also too so we've got we've got New South Wales Sydney but people are asking about Maxine's tea cozy where's it at I think that's going to be part of the museum the wax uh, museum when we uh Close the Wentworth facility and people take pay as well as her breasts probably you know people come around and they see the dining room scene and the steam uh, the laundry scene they'll see Maxine's tea cozy and and uh, the pen that stabbed Jack's Holt and Frankie's undies and Maxine's breasts I don't know sending love from Japan oh konnichiwa Japan um, people are asking question too. Who do you go from state of origin, New South Wales or Queensland? New South Wales. Renee wants to know what has been the hardest or funniest part of playing Maxine. The hardest part has been maintaining an authenticity, being a man and not being part of the transgender community. That's been the hardest part. And um, the greatest part, uh, I think I answered that quite earlier on is actually being part of the dialogue and expanding people's notions of what trans means and um, getting the support from you guys all across the, gro uh, the globe and, and, and meeting so many trans people. All my grace to you because you educate me and inspire me on a daily basis. Yeah, so being part of that has just been the, the biggest gift. Yeah. Rachel Louise wants to know if you like marshmallows. I do, toasting them especially. I've got a fire pit out the back. Where are you? Where does it say we should? Doesn't miss the but New Zealand, say hi. I was going to say, come over. Aote Aurora, New Zealand. Why did it sound like Japanese? Oh, Sarah wants to know is Maxine still in contact with Gary? Sarah, do you know something that the rest of Australia don't know? She hasn't been in contact with Gary, but now that she's got a life and death diagnosis coming up, I wonder what she's going to do. Wonder where Gary is. But why did he get off scot free? He attacked. He attacked Maxine first. He hacked her hair off first. I mean, this is we should, You know, how interesting is that for today's day and age as well politically? I mean, Maxine gets incarcerated for self defence. You know, grievous bodily harm when he's the one that um, hacked her hair off in the beginning. Bloody Gary. He's an interesting one. I'm sure he should have been people... incarcerated well... because he, he liked her as a blonde. Wrong. Mm. Look how good she looks with with dark she hair. She does look better. Thanks. But Janelle wants to know... Kelly's got blonde hair. <laughs> Janelle... Blondes have more fun. Janelle wants to no, know... No, <laughs> Janelle wants... Let's back to Janelle. Janelle would like Has to know... Has there been a blonde top dog? No. Jax was uh, blonde. Grey blonde. Oh, was she? Yeah. Oh, yeah, she was. But anyway, back to Janelle. Janelle. Janelle wants to know... Now, I forgot what Janelle wanted to know. <laughs> she, she wants to know about the breasts. wants to know about how, the, how, how, what's it like to get them put on. What, what's the process? Janelle, okay. It, much to the dismay of Tess and Meg. Meg, who's our special effects kind of makeup person. When, when Marcia came to us and said, we actually want to see the examination, much to the dismay of, of, the, of the hair and makeup team, 
uh, we were still up for that challenge because with five on it went with like absolutely groundbreaking television. So I was up for it absolutely. I a couple of weeks it was uh, uh, Tess and Megs did a lot of research on my body shape. This is it's very detailed stuff. My body shape, my skin tone, my particular moles, and how they would be shaped on the breast compared to my skin. I had to do a lot of lying down, a lot of gluing, a lot of molding. There's replicates. Um, so it took a couple of weeks to, um, to get them done. Um, maybe three to four hours in one session. I was just lying down. But it was amazing. Uh, it, now, J J Janine asked me that? Janelle. Janelle asked me that. Had Joe or a Bob or a bloke asked me that, I mean, imagine what it's like to have, you know, breasts for a, for a couple of hours. It's every guy's dream, right? They do look good. Yeah, they do. They do. Um, what about, is there going to be a hookup between Ali and B? Is is Bally real? Oh, Maxine's caught onto something, hasn't she? She saw the way Ali looked at B. And um, I think it was episode one or two, she did say to B, you should take advantage of this. We don't know exactly what's going to happen from that, but if there is, then she's going to take full consequence for it. I think Maxine, she should. Yeah, but then, <laughs> why not? <laughs> you know, if, if if something happens, hey, look, look what I did, <laughs> little matchmaker. But if it doesn't, doesn't matter because I'm top dog, so who gives a shit? <laughs> um, we've got love from Canada. Hey, Canada. Um, we have Madeline Mills. Are you drunk? Why would you say that? Marilyn, seriously, why would I say that? Why? Because I said that like that. <laughs> no, I'm very happy. Kelly, my jail bitch, has supplied me with a couple of bottles of wine. She's, um... I, I'm quite blind, so that's why I can't actually do this on my own. Um, no, I'm not drunk. I'm just happy that you are in Canada. So much love. And you are sending me some Brooke love. Fisher. It was Brooke Fisher. Hey, Brooke! Brooke Fisher. Shout out to Brooke Fisher. And Jade Poole says, Kelly, please, but I don't know what you want me to do. So, so Show right yourself, again. Kelly. No. I think you've got to. No. How long do you I think you she have? wants me to answer a question. Oh. You've got a little bit longer. Okay. Um, shout out to Cessnock. Hey, Cessnock. Um, people are talking a lot about the different wine that you get in jail and what sort of drink you drink there. Um, Tim Jessen yeah. wants to know, is the steam press real? The steam press uh, can be real, thanks to Paris Smith, who is our props extraordinaire. Uh, it certainly felt real. Uh, it looks real. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's real. <laughs> it's real. Um, shout out to Dubbo. Hey, Dubbo. <laughs> it's getting hot in here. It is. You can take your jacket off. Actually, someone asked you, what is the, like, what is the brand of your jacket? I want to know. It's Black Squad. It's not Kanye. Black Squad, it's European. It's pretty cool. Yeah, not bad. Caddy says, I love this. Let's do it once a week. Is this Milosevic? No. Oh. Caddy. Hey, Caddy. With me? Did am I top dog next week? I can't, I can't say. Because if I am, can I come back? <laughs> Does anyone want me to come back? Yes. Don't really have anything to do Tuesday nights. Um... <laughs> Can you hang out with me? Has anyone... Katie Louise would like to know, has anyone ever got injured during filming? I think they have. Yes. Um, and the first I heard of it... Actually, I was there. Remember, um, uh, if, if you guys caught an audience with Wentworth, Nicole was talking about the big fight that she and uh, B have. Uh, and um, they were going at it for hours and they someone smashed into a dryer and... And I think Nick was catching a flight the next day and she was so bruised. Yeah, look across the board, people have gotten hurt. Like I said, Charlie, when I had to kick Charlie in episode two, uh, Tina, episode two or three, um, because she was bringing drugs into the prison, the poor thing had bruises. And oh God, <laughs> I just admit that I kicked, I kicked a girl with and uh, gave her bruises. I'm sure it was the stunt double one, show, stunt person showing me what to do first. But yes, I guess they have. Can you please say a shout out to Lucy Fisher? There's two Fishers. Another Fisher. Hello, Lucy Fisher. Absolutely. Hi, Lucy Fisher. 
How are you? And Did you enjoy the show? Did How was the show tonight? And lots and lots of people want to see your tats. They're like, show us your tats. Which ones? I think the ones on your arms that they can see. This is a bonsai tree. And as you know, um, well, if you look closely, Maxine has um, roses attached to these trees and petals. Um, if you go back to the original Wentworth uh, on the inside, he used to bring me roses, and that was something that I came up with with Tess uh, Natoli, our head of makeup. I wanted to actually bring that sort of sentiment from the original Lynn Hamilton song on the inside, which was Prisoner's Theme. Um, he used to bring me roses, so I attached roses to this uh, bonsai tree, which she attached every week. <laughs> Jared wants to know, how tall are you? Jared, I am six foot one, and six foot two and a half with heels. And Dale wants to know what your stand Not that I wear heels. <laughs> I tried to just move on. Dale wants to know what's your stance on drugs. Maxine's or socks? It says your, so we can go with we can go with either or. Drugs are bad. Drugs are bad. Um they're not for me. They're not for Maxine either. They're not they're definitely not for Maxine. Apart from hormones. Her HRT, which are regarded as drugs, but yeah, absolutely. No, you don't need them. Kelly has supplied me with a beautiful bottle of wine, so I, you know, I'll deal with the Barossa Valley from South Australia, but uh, drugs, no. Um, Is it time to see Kelly? So, <laughs> um, if you could play any other character in Wentworth, who would it be from M? I'd love to play Joan Ferguson, I think. Um, the polar opposite to Maxine. I think that would be awesome. I do remember when I first met the writers and I said, how interesting is it that, when, you know, when we first saw Pamela Rabe, Joan Ferguson, she looked quite militaristic and quite masculine. And when we first saw Maxine, Maxine was, um, you know, a masculine type of a recently transitioned trans woman. So she still had quite a masculine build, but she was, she was a woman. She was a feminine woman. So I like that dichotomy. And I was always fascinated with doing a lot more with with um, uh, Joan Ferguson, so it would have to be her. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are asking for a shout out to the, all the flood victims from the the weekend. Oh, absolutely! There's so many people. We had a jacaranda just smash in our backyard over the weekend as well. I mean, it's a twenty foot jacaranda, which is crazy. So yes, a shout out to all the flood victims, and I hope you're safe. And um, there's still reports coming in about people drowning and it, it, it's terrible it's crazy i haven't been in sydney for seven years and i've heard about natural disasters all over but I, but yeah i was i was in the middle of it myself so yeah be safe everybody be safe okay we're gonna have to you're gonna have to head back in i'm gonna have to wrap this up soon so okay. the last couple of questions yeah um let's see who's coming in there's always love coming in maxine for governor you're for the governor? best i love for you. governor yeah Right yep. to the writers. Yeah. <sighs> Don't know how that'll go, but... Um, Paige Barker wants to know, what's Pamela like in person? Oh, just beautiful. The antithesis. If there's two characters in the show and two actors in the show, they're the completely antithesis to what their characters are. It's Pamela Rabe and Katrina Milosevic. Katrina uh, and Boomer, you know, Boomer's slightly slow. Katrina's very quick-witted. Pamela Rabe is a lunatic. Pamela... Joan Ferguson's a lunatic. Pamela Rabe is anything but. So, yeah. Socks for Prime Minister. Oh, thank you very much. But no, not not, not We not love Michael. you, Socks. Shout thank out, you. shout we out. Love we love you. Please love say you. Rachel Louise before you go. Rachel Louise before I go. Outstanding actor. We love you, Maxine. So thank much you. love coming in. It's so awesome to see. Um, oh, the Foxtel staff at Rabina want a shout out. Hey, the Foxtel staff at Rabina. Why aren't you here with Kelly and me? Exactly. <laughs> We're working the late shift. Yes, we are. Okay. Last last question uh, is... Okay. This is the, we pick a really good one. Um, da, 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 da. Come on, someone really good come in with something. Well, there is something I do want to say. Oh, okay. As well. Free speak. Okay. Well, I've always maintained this, the success of this show, because I think it's necessary for me to, for me to talk about. You take the incarceration out of, out of Wentworth, 
And I think this, the global success of this show relies on you guys seeing yourselves in the characters that are represented on this show. They look like you. They look like your neighbours. They look like our family. They are struggling with self-harm. They are struggling with suicidal tendencies, alcoholism, uh, drug dependent, LGBT pioneers who are being persecuted, um, people in authority with gambling addictions, obsessive compulsives. Now, yeah, look, it's harrowing and it's grim. And although the world is beautiful, the world has these complexities. And I think what is great and what is successful is that you guys love this show because you're seeing real people and real characters represented this way and you feel like you're able to connect because there's such a stigma attached to people saying, yeah, I actually am depressed or I do have um, self-harm issues or I am being bullied. And all I want to say to you is that your stories through social media that are coming to us, and not just me, but all the cast, make us go delve deeper and truer into these territories because they exist. And all I say is just back yourself and love yourself more and keep speaking up because this is what makes the show. And I think we, as a human race, are losing connection. And I think we've just got to come back and actually let go of the fear and speak up and... Um, remind ourselves that, that that is what life and love is all about. And I, I really do believe that that is what, why Wentworth is so successful across the globe. That made, I'm um, hopefully that made They all did. Everyone says, well said. Great. Yeah, well, it's the truth. It's Angling the truth. It. It's the truth. So the last question is, and I think we should, we, should, we should talk about this because we haven't really given her any love, is how is Vera going as governor? Oh. And how cool is Kate this season? I think, I think, um, Dan said it last week how sublime Team Vera is uh, is Kate this season she's incredible little Kate <gasps> I said little <laughs> sorry it's only because I'm 6 foot 1 okay but yeah she's incredible all kudos to her I second that hashtag Team, team Vera um, she's, she's, she's incredible she's incredible and, and so so deserving to be governor finally finally I wonder what's going to happen with the new um uh, officer, yeah, that's just come on board. Yeah, all right, I've got to stop. You've got to stop right, talking I'm, about this I'm, stuff. I'm, 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 I'm pulling you Can up. Can I coax you? It's your last. It's your last farewell to everyone. Last. Thank words. you. Thank you so much. This has been such a treat. All my grace to you. Again, keep sending us, sending us your stories and your um, your support for the show. We love it. And, you know, if you want to um, hit me up on social media and then I haven't asked, uh, answered, managed to answer your question because Kelly has chosen the questions she's um, <laughs> given to me, then find me on Twitter. Um, I'm Socrates Otto on Instagram. I'm Socrates Otto. And um, I'll do my best to get back to you over the next couple of days. But thank you. Thank you. It's just been, it's been awesome. Your support is unprecedented. Bye.